Jean has, still has an amazing twinkle in her eye after all these years. So, um, I bet it is because oh, I can't go too close. Um, for all of you, for, after all these years, how difficult was it to not be able to talk about anything until the like, mid-70s, I think, from the earliest you could? Well, I suppose the answer is that we were told not to, and in those days there was discipline. And if you were told not to do something or do something, that's what you did. That sounds just like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it wasn't that difficult because we knew that we were doing something important. We didn't want to prejudice anybody else's safety by chattering about things that we had no right to chatter about. And after the war, where we got on with our life, and I suppose we forgot about this a bit, until 1975-ish, when the book came out and things were revealed to the public which had not been known before. And when you were, when you were allowed to talk about it, did you just feel like you wanted to tell everyone, or...? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I couldn't tell my mummy and my daddy, because they'd already died. They never knew what I did. Which must have been so hard to, you know... Yes, but a lot of time had gone by, you know, really. And we were busy getting on with our lives and having our babies and and supporting our husbands, you know, the way one does. Quite right, too. Quite right, too. Um, <laughs> oh. Now, the wonderful Jean Valentine. Um, Betty, could you tell me a little bit about when you, when you first came... We, I mean, basically... No, that's no, fine. How, how you got involved with Bletch in the first place. I mean, how were you recruited? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it's the biggest secret ever. No, seriously, I, I have no idea. I only surmise that at the time, most of the uh, uh, army units and, and other uh, military units were asked to look out for people who had um, linguistic or perhaps also mathematical qualifications. But beyond that, I have absolutely no idea. Not uh, only in my, in my imagination. And tell me, when you did arrive mm. here, how did it all happen? You, I mean, did you get a ticket to Bletchley, or what I happened? I got a ticket to Bletchley from Euston, yes, and arrived in the dock, and was sent to a billet in New Bradwell, which was pretty awful. I was with another girl who had escaped from Belgium, literally, with the Nazis one end of the house, and she got out of the other end. And she and I piled up and found that we were in this billet in Bradwell, having not only to share a room, but a bed. <laughs> not too bad, I wouldn't mind. embarrassing, believe me. So true. Um, and so when, when you did arrive, um, and when you did arrive here, how did they sort of receive you? I mean, in terms of the Official Secrets Act? And... Oh, well, the Official Secrets Act, rather formidable looking document, rather a lot of it, had to be read and signed and one swore that one wouldn't say a word forever. And I was pretty young at the time, as you know, and uh, I thought, now, how am I going to do this? And uh, I didn't think for very long. I just said to myself, Betty, you've been told you do not say anything, and you don't. That's the end of it. Amazing. Betty, thank you so, so, so much. When I first met Betty, it was here uh, a couple of months ago, and she just hopped in the car and driven from Birmingham and, uh, and zoomed back. It was just incredible, incredible, incredible. Um, Ruth, can I ask you just a quick, quick question? Yeah, so when you were here, obviously they're here with a number of other Wrens doing similar stuff to yourself. Were you ever allowed to talk about what you did at work? Well, only if you were in the place where you were actually working. We had two lives. One was outside what we called B Block. Uh, and then we had a life inside B Block where the bombs were. So. When you were in there, you could talk about, you know, have you had any uh, good wheel orders tonight? Have you broken any codes or whatever? We, that's all we were ever told. We we're breaking codes. I never heard the word enigma. That was in the rents for over two years. Um, and that was, you could talk about it while you were having your tea and so on. But once you went out through the door and uh, went back into your quarters, um, that was different. You had an ordinary life. We talked about going to dances, going into London, and so on. So that's how it was. One life in, in, in the work, and one outside. Thank you so, so much. Thank you all three of you. I really appreciate it. And they're here all evening.